I'll just uh, give a brief introduction. Apurva Khare attended the IMOTC in 1996 and 1997 before his BSTAT at ISI Kolkata and PhD in Mathematics at the University of Chicago. After teaching mathematics, including at Yale and Stanford, he returned to join IIS Bangalore, where he's an assistant professor in mathematics and a Ramanujan fellow. His research interests include matrix analysis and positivity, representation theory, combinatorics, and a bit of probability. And he's going to talk on uh, groups with norms from word games to a polymath project. It's over to you, Apurva. I guess, I hope everyone can hear me. Is the mic working? Thank you, right? Yeah, okay, so uh, as first of all, it, yeah, as, as uh, Antor also said, it is a, it's a great honor to be back at the Olympiad camp where 20, more than 20 years ago I was on that side. Uh, unlike Antor, I have no memory of you know, the final day or anything, but it was definitely uh, um, one of the most, uh, I don't know, landmark or foundational, or I don't, can't even think of the right adjective. Um, times in my in my life because that's really as, as and that's what actually uh, goes back to what Professor Raghunathan was saying, is is it brought me in contact with all these incredibly sharp minds and you learn what is possible. It is you learn it's possible for you to think faster, to think better, to think. and that for me definitely was the biggest takeaway from the Olympiad camp is I improved my own way or my own level of thinking as a mathematics problem solver uh, and. Uh, in, in, in a certain sense, this the project that I will describe to you brings me back full circle to exactly that philosophy because it brought me in contact with some of the sharpest minds I have known, uh, especially the, the last one is very famously very sharp and the first one actually is very sharp. And, uh, and, and again, it, it, you know, once, you, once you meet these or interact with these people, you really again see maybe the next level after the Olympiad came, the next level of how one can think even faster, even sharper and, and that definitely for me was a big learning experience. So, in, 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 in I am very happy that it actually happened just a few months before this Olympiad camp and uh, uh, brought me back to you know the same kind of uh, maybe you know school if you will where I, I, I learned some more as well. Not just about the math itself, of course there are some very fun and clever ideas here, but also about thinking about math. Yeah. Anyway, so, so the, so the Whatever this, I, I won't even assume what a group is. I'll try to explain something from the board. Norms everybody here has seen, so I will tell you what they are. And the point is, this 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 is a question that doesn't require any kind of you know any background, any thing. It just requires clever ideas, and the solutions entirely using clever ideas. And uh, and so I thought it's actually, uh, in some sense, nice enough to present at an Olympiad camp where you know. As I said, the, 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 techni the technology, the tools, the definitions you need are not so many. The ideas you will see are hopefully interesting. And they are interesting equally to people like Terence Tao as to people here. Okay. So, this was a completely, so again, okay, and again, in contrast to the previous talk, which was very classical, which goes back to Gauss and Laplace and so on, this is on a problem that can be, as I said, asked without any, any maths in some sense almost, and yet nothing was known. Not a single example, not a single counterexample, and in, it got solved in the space of five days. But again, it's also a very modern uh, uh, solution in the sense that it, the fact that it got solved in five days makes use of the internet, it makes use of blogs, it makes use of, and it crucially made use of a computer where human intuition sort of seemed to stop working. A computer was the next thing that provided the big. So it's a very 21st century. Uh, project and therefore a 21st century talk. Uh, so, okay, without further ado then, so my, yeah, so this is actually based on, this is a full fledged research paper and I am going to try to give you about 70 percent of the proof, so of 70 percent of the paper if you will uh, and as I said it requires pretty much nothing. Okay, so, joint with Tobias Pitts, he is uh, in Germany, Siddharth Gargil who is my colleague and actually was my senior in college uh, in Bangalore, Pace Nielsen in Utah in USA. Leo Silberman in Vancouver and Terence Tao in Los Angeles. Okay. So, okay, so here is here is the basic problem at hand. So, uh, I need to define for you the players in the game, and then so there's there's a, a collection of strings, and there's a function acting on them. So, here is the collection of strings. So there's consider the collection of strings in four letters. So let's, let's call them alpha, beta, and alpha bar and beta bar, which are essentially one over alpha and one over beta. 
So, you can write down strings like you know, you can write down a long string like you know, alpha, beta, alpha, alpha, beta bar, alpha bar, things like that. This collection of strings are finite length, like, just that sort. Okay. And the only two rules, so there is one rule, the two rules here are that alpha and alpha bar cancel each other. So, if I had alpha and uh, that much, then I could say this is the same as alpha, beta, alpha, alpha, beta bar. Yes, and these just go away. And similarly for beta and beta bar and does not matter which order they occur, so they cancel each other. Okay. And if I have, so I am allowed to also consider the empty string which has no alphas or betas or these things. So, you can call it the empty set or you can call it 1. Okay. And we do not, in particular we do not assume things like alpha beta is beta alpha. So, you know you, you cannot take things past each other, the string is the string, you cannot like change. A word is a word, you do not say that you know, you do not say cat is act. So, you cannot take A and C past each other. So, the similarly you cannot take alpha. So, these, these are the strings. Okay. And the one extra operation permitted is I can multiply two strings. So, if I have one string and another string, I can just put them together. That is all. And so, in particular alpha, beta, alpha, so if I have these two strings, that is three letters, two letters, I make it a five letter string. And then I can, the one rule I am allowed to use is I can cancel pairs, like a particle and an antiparticle, they cancel, right. And so, you get alpha, beta. Strings. Okay, so this is the one thing I permitted. So in math, we call this whole thing the free group on two letters, but forget what we call it. It's just a collection of strings in two letters and their inverses and their reciprocal. That's all. Okay, fine. Uh, now here is an example of this string with some additional relations. So suppose I could take the alpha. Suppose I could say alpha beta is beta alpha. Right? Then. What is an example of that? Well, here are so, so remember, alpha and beta are going to act as some actions, and here are two actions that can be interchanged and which have inverses. Okay, so alpha is one step to the east, and beta is one step to the north. And then, if I take one step to the east and then one step to the north, I get here. If I took one step to the north and then one step to the east in the reverse order, I would still get there. So, alpha beta equals beta alpha. I do not assume this in general, but here is an example where I do assume it. And then what is alpha bar? What undoes one step to the east, one step to the west? And what is beta bar? That is alpha, beta, alpha bar, beta bar with the additional relation. Okay, fine. So, these are one east step, one north step. So, alpha, beta denote that. And then you can consider all strings of this kind. And then what this string will denote is the net displacement. You start at the origin, let us say at 0, 0, where do you end up? That is the string. Yeah. And of course, if you have south and north or east and west, you can just cancel them because you do not do anything. You come back to the point where you started. So, the net displacement does not change. Okay. That is the, that's the, that's an example of what this is. And the, the point about strings is, so when you have, so here you are allowed to have more tricks, more rules to use to play around with. I am saying even without those rules, I am going to ask you a question and we will see well. So, for asking you that question, the problem, here is the, the next player, the second and last player. Suppose there is a function and I call it L because it is supposed to stand for length. So, length of that, so I said that this stands for some displacement, that is going to be the length of the displacement. How much distance, like as the crow flies from the origin is there. So, okay, so so, I am sticking to that collection of strings, that free group, but you could ask the same question modulo these additional rules that you can use. So, suppose the length satisfies just two properties. Okay. One is that it is a sub additive function. So, if you have a string, uh, if you have, uh, let us see, yeah, so if you have the length of this thing, I just write it down. Right. So, the length of this thing, if I can write this as a product of two things, then the length of alpha, beta, alpha, alpha, beta bar is less than the length of the first part plus the length of the second part. That is all, that is one rule. And the second rule is if g and h are equal, so this is should be true for every, every possible pair of strings. And if g and h are equal, then now think of this example, right. So, uh, well, okay, I will get to the example in a minute, but so if g and h are equal, then l is actually additive. So, you get double the length. And that again, so that should be very, uh, uh, okay, here is the problem. Okay, let me just first tell you the problem, fine. So, suppose you have a, you have some function on the collection of strings, it takes a, a string and it gives you some number. 
it can be some real number negative positive 0 ok. It satisfies exactly these two properties length of g h is, is sub additive and if g equals h it is additive. Is it true that the length of alpha beta alpha bar beta bar is less equal to 0 and I am going to draw all these things in this case because that yeah, I can draw these things in a second ok. Uh, the interesting thing was so for those of you who know what free groups are and what norms are or metrics are this is ok. So, I, if I further assume that this length was non negative this would essentially be a metric and the question is is it true that there is a metric on the free group which is additive for equal argument and this was not, not never no examples were known and is it that no examples exist that was not known. basically nothing was known about this problem and it is very simple to ask you can ask it after. So, literally you can understand what this problem really is saying I am saying really is saying not just in these pictures after say one year of college map and but at the same time nothing was known. Uh, and so uh, the interesting thing then was as I said it is a very 21st century talk because it starts on the blog used a computer and ends in 5 days and presumably in older times it would require collaborations which would take time to form then slowly exchange letters and you know it would probably take more than 5 days. And this happened all over the world some people was it somebody was in Germany he solved something then when he slept somebody was in India they solved something when they slept somebody was in USA and Canada they solved something and kept going on the on the clock as you can see from the you know if you look at the blog there are comments and the, what time the comments are made you can see and you can see that the comments keep happening around the end ok. So, back to the example I want to write down those two rules for the example and ask this question. So, uh, this was the setting alpha is an east step beta is a north step. Now, this word simply denotes the displacement as I said and how do you calculate the distance the how do you calculate the length of the displacement you use Pythagoras theorem right? x coordinate y coordinate. So, uh, ok more generally let us say instead of alpha and beta like this which were unit length let us say my alpha was you know some distance a and beta was some distance b. It is still the same things happen you know the it is still you can talk about the displacement it is just that displacement now becomes some like one and one alpha and one beta goes to the point a comma b not 1 comma 1 right, that is all nothing has changed ok. So, now given a string s a string s meaning something like this this is a string simply count the number of times alpha occurs call it n of alpha and then count beta and alpha bar and beta bar you just count the number of times they occur and then what is the length well. So, the length is what is the coordinate it is a times the number of east steps minus the number of west steps right, because if you take steps backwards then you would have to backtrack. So, that is all and then plus b square times this. So, and then so and the y coordinate is b times this and then by the same distance Pythagoras theorem you get this formula. Anyway, so why does this satisfy the two properties? So, whether or not you had this extra rule I claim that those two properties are satisfied. Well, l is substantive because if you have any so what is a string? A string takes some start at the origin you do something and you get somewhere else ok that is that is string 1 let us say a string 2 does starts from the origin and does well starts from this point and does something else and the total string is this and of course, you know that the length of one side of a triangle is less than the sum of the other two lengths that is called the triangle inequality that is why this is satisfied. So, those two properties are satisfied for this model just because one is called a triangle inequality and the other is saying that if you start at some point and do some action some string g and then you again do the same action well then you are just going along the same direction for twice the length. So, the length is twice. So, it is really saying nothing there is nothing there right. in per in fact more generally if you have n g to the n meaning you take that same string and do it n times you just go n times along the same direction for the same length. So, your length becomes n times and now what was that question the question was what happens to this the length of this element. The question was what happens to alpha beta alpha bar beta bar. Well, but what is alpha beta alpha bar beta bar? You take alpha beta backtrack and backtrack and you come back to 0. And so, you of course, the length is 0 in particular it is non positive. I asked was it less equal 0 in fact, it is equal to 0. So, yes. So, in this case clearly the problem is 
Okay, now so here is the problem you can state for any group. This is the same question, but instead of saying, uh, yeah, so this is how one says it formally. Well, this is the only time I will use the word group, so you may as well see it once in your life. Well, before if you see it later, it's very good that you will. You may see it once in the camp, or maybe you already have. Suppose G is any group. A group just means like a set of strings, so it's some set with a way to compose or multiply. For strings, we said take a string, take a string, put them together. So you have some way of putting things together. A zero element like the empty string, and an inverse or reciprocal like alpha bar. So, for example. Uh, Oh, by the way, I should ask you. So, uh, well, I'll ask you later. Okay. So, suppose L is a. So now here is the true problem, which where condition one was not asked earlier. I didn't mention it earlier at all. But now let's say I mentioned. So suppose this length is always non-negative, and the length. When is the displacement zero? The dis, when is the displacement exactly zero? It's zero exactly when you have done nothing. You are at the origin. So, and the origin is what you call the identity. The thing that's. Uh, yeah. So, equality if and only if g is that special element 0 element, length of g and length of g inverse are the same. g inverse means you are doing the steps in the opposite direction. So, you have this way, you would be on the other side, but they should have the same length. For that, I need that alpha and alpha bar have the same length here and beta and beta bar here, for instance. And length is subadditive, which we had said, that is the triangle inequality. And there is the extra hypothesis that I had said, and that extra hypothesis is what makes all the difference. Okay, when if g is h, then l is positive. Here is the main theorem of the paper that I uh, mentioned. G has to be abelian. G has to be commutative. Meaning, so the point is this group. If I so if I take alpha beta and alpha bar, then I get alpha beta alpha bar. This is not the same as composing in the reverse order: alpha bar first and alpha beta next. Here I just get beta. This string and this string are not the same. So, this group is not commutative whatever that means. It means that you cannot just take elements and multiply them in any order and expect to get the same answer, but that is forced by that extra hypothesis. So, basically the statement says if you have a group, if, if you know what these words mean, if you have a group with a norm meaning this last condition. So, you have a group with a metric which is a norm that group must be abelian and that group must be something called torsion free. And remarkable, not so hard is the statement that if you have an abelian and torsion free group, you can have a norm on it. So that is whatever that means. Forget these mumbo jumbos, but yeah, as, uh, but that is the statement. This is actually an if and only. Yeah. Anyway, so, but here let me tell you the proof of this statement from, from the thing. So, L satisfies these two properties that we started with, which maybe I should write here, anyways, because I will keep referring to them. Uh, L of what is it? G H is less equals L of G plus L of H, and L of G square is equal to twice L. Of G. Okay, so L satisfies these two properties. So if you believe, yeah. So if you believe from this, so my remember my original question. The question was, is it true that L of Alpha bar, alpha beta, alpha bar, beta bar is less equal zero. So if you believe that that's true, meaning G H, G inverse H inverse, right? Alpha bar is just the inverse of alpha, and beta bar is the inverse of beta. If you believe this is true from just these two properties, then, then, then fine. Then that's what I'm saying here. That's all I've said. If the original problem in that free group was true, was had the correct has a positive answer, this is true. Then that's what that's all I'm saying here. But the hypothesis one said that the L function is always non negative. So, how can you have this to be non positive and non negative? It has to be 0. When can it be 0? It can only be 0 if this string is the identity. So, what do I get? I just got this is E. From now, what do I do? I multiply on the right by H. So, these two cancel. That is what reciprocals do. E times h is just h, that is what identities do. And now I get g h, g inverse is h. Well, multiply by g, those two cancel, and I get g h equals h. So, just knowing if, if you believe me that this implication is true, if this were to be true, then the group map has to be commuted. That is sort of very simple. Why is this true? Is this true? And if so, why? 
and that involves what I mentioned in the title of the talk word games. So, now I want to try to tell you the word. So, back to this back to the original problem at hand. So, in some sense to solve this problem you can first of all you can try to work with as many rules on g and h as you want. You can say that g and h commute in which case we know that this is just 0 in some Okay. You can work with other you can work with extra rules like g square is 1 maybe or h square you can work with what we call relations in groups. This is the case the free group is the case where there are no relations. So, you have no extra rules to play with there are no extra tricks you can use only this much these are the only two things you have you can concatenate you can put two strings together you can take inverses nothing else and even so this is like the worst case the hardest case. If it is true here you should be able to hope that it is true everywhere else, but is it true here and why? very easy to state and as I said it still took you know 5 days with incredibly sharp people working on it. Uh, so, so first of all okay, let us see I claim that this is a group. So, that is in bold why is it a group what is the 0 element is the empty string right? take empty string put anything together on left or on right you get what you put together the empty string exactly is that. What is the inverse of alpha or beta bar that we know the inverse of alpha was what we call alpha bar the inverse of beta bar is beta because if a is a in the reciprocals are reciprocals at for lack of a better way of saying it. What is the inverse of alpha beta is it that it is not okay, that is correct it is the other way right. So, you have to do it in the reverse way you have to write down it is beta bar and alpha bar. So, if you put beta bar here the first cancels then you get alpha and alpha bar then they cancel. So, you cannot just say this right in general. Right? Uh, so, for example, if you have the inverse of this nice element we were looking at then that would be first take the inverse of the rightmost that is beta bar inverse is beta then alpha then beta bar alpha. So, just usual tricks to do okay. fine. So, what we want to understand is if g is uh, so now if g is this group and it satisfies these two conditions for all strings g and h then what can you say about this or maybe I will even so this was true for all g and h this was true for all g the question is maybe I will make it even simpler not for some general g and h let us look at the specific string alpha beta alpha bar beta bar these g and h are words in these letters let me just look at this four letter string not some g h longer just the shortest possible such thing what is this why is this true. Okay, and now here are where the word games start. Okay, so now I'm going to so so how does one get around to trying to prove this? Okay, so, okay. So uh, okay, well, so here we go. So the first claim is that the length of so as I said, length of g times h is le less than length of g plus length of h. Now from that I claim that you can prove this. Yes, how? One word. Induction. Thank you. Right, induction. Great. Oh, sorry, I wrote it down. Did I? Fine. I thought this was supposed to be a quiz. Anyway, <laughs> one last throwback. Like quick, how quickly can you? Anyway, yeah. Uh, so okay. The second one is that. So first of all, okay. This one I didn't write down. So good. So, suppose I set all of them to be equal. So I, then I just get the kth power of something. I like, you know, perform the same action k times. So clearly, you just get this is less equals length of g plus length of g plus length of g. That's k times length of g. I claim it's equal. Always it's equal. Why? So, some of them are easy to check for example, length of g square if k is 2 you have 2 things this is actually given to us, but from that I claim that length of g fourth is 4 times length of g yes because you take g square square and then and so by this you can therefore say by induction that length of for which k does it work immediately powers of 2 all powers of 2 you get the same. How about length of g to the 6 6 is not a power of 2. So, Again, yes. N implies n minus one. Excellent. Oh wow. Okay, that is very sharp. Yes. So I was gonna do it. Yeah. Well, that that's actually yeah. Just okay. Saying that is enough. Let me actually spell it out. What he said. So take any power of two bigger than that, and I'll do n implies n minus two in this case. But that's twice the apply application of what he said. Right. So take so g to the eight. That's eight times length of g by power of two write g to the 8 as 8 there are 8 of them. So, take 6 of them what we want plus 1 plus 1 so that is less than length of g to the 6 plus length g plus length g 
because I am using the fact that there are this is a product of three terms, but I can use this by induction, right? And then now this is, but now length of g to the six by the same argument is less than six L g, and now I get back eight. So I start with eight, I get back eight. Therefore, every inequality in between must be an equality. So this is an equality. Remove the two, you get the g to the six. Right? So so you can do the same for every power. Great. So this is nice. So we have one one nice uh, consequence. A specific nice consequence is for equal arguments for any power, integer power, they are equal. Now, the third one is interesting. Well, the title, if you know what conjugation is, that is the third one is saying conjugation preserves length. So, let us take any string and then take two elements, left multiply and right multiply that string with one letter or one string each, but those strings should be inverses of each other. Okay. So, you get some string. Can we prove that the length of s is length of t? that turns out to be slightly harder. So, here is how one does it is called string uh, the string is these strings are called conjugates of each other and conjugates the nice thing is they behave very nicely with powers. So, if you take the square of this string alpha t alpha bar alpha t alpha bar then you see the alpha and alpha bar cancel. So, you get alpha t square alpha bar and then you can do by n if you take one more alpha t alpha bar those will cancel and those will cancel. So, in general you just get that s to the n is alpha t to the n alpha this is true not just for positive integers it is true for n equals 0 because you get alpha alpha bar which is 0 which is yes 1 and this is true for negative integers it is true everywhere. Lemma L is actually conjugate invariant take any two strings g and h just from these two properties and the two that we deduced on the previous slide you can get that the length is y. Okay, here is the proof now let me since the, I do not have time so I will show you the proof I am sure you guys can come up with it. Uh, given enough time. So, the proof is very simple start with the length of g h g inverse multiplied by some number n positive number n. What is this? This is the length of the nth power that is what we did on the previous slide length of any string to the n is n times its length. So, what is the length of this? It is the length of this to the n as we just saw what that means that means g h to the n g inverse Fine. and now I use my property 1. So, it is less than length of g because length of g inverse and then h to the n as we again know is less equals n times length of h that is the same thing applied inductively. Okay. This is true for all n and now we use what uh, the previous speaker Anthar told us the method of divide well, so divide by n divide both sides and the powerful trick is to take n to infinity it sounds like a very small very small idea, but uh, very simple thing to do, but here is what it really means suppose I mean very simply what it really means suppose I know that a I have some real number a and that is less than 1 over n for all n. These are all positive numbers, but from this fact for all n I know that this immediately implies and of course, it can only if a is less equals 0. So, that is that idea that you can go from any this is what we call, you know calls the Archimedean property of the real numbers for every real number there is a rational or 1 over n smaller than it, but this idea is a very very powerful one in some sense and uh, that is what we are going to use. So, dividing by n you get the length this n goes away the length of what you want here is less equals length of h plus this stuff which does not depend on n divided by n and now when you take n to infinity that goes away. So, you get the less equals here, but I want equality what do I do now apply the same trick right if g a g if this is a conjugate of h then h is a conjugate of this right? I pre multiply by g inverse and post multiply by g which are inverses of each other. So, if I call this whole thing h prime then length of h prime is bigger than length of g inverse h prime g. So, I exactly get the reverse of equality right. So, I get equal. So, you see so you can start playing these games and that is why I call them word games you can start playing these games and deduce more and more facts ok. Uh, okay. Um, actually, that's this trick is a powerful method in mathematics, and considering this thing, which is called a commutator, uh, whatever it means, is a useful trick for proving that these things commute. Because if you can show that this string is one, is the identity, meaning it has length zero, if you will, then this equal to one, and then we saw how to post multiply by g, and then g inverse, of first beta, and then alpha, and get that, right. So back to asking. So we have proved all these nice properties. So we have proved. Uh, what have we seen? We have seen that uh, length of g to the n is n times length of g 
and length of g h g inverse is length of g. We have just proved these extra two properties and the one by induction I do not mention that is it. Ah, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. right. So, these are the two we have proved so far. Okay. So, now so, okay. so, more generally can we find a, what one calls a non abelian group things do not commute. If they do commute of course, here is an example of a group where we can prove this very easily if this distance was 0 north, east, west, south or whatever was 0. Okay. So, find this thing or show that no such group exists and as I said. So, uh, so this somehow so this showed up sort of naturally out of some work I was doing in probability theory, but then I actually emailed various people somebody at Harvard, somebody at North Western, not Eastern, somebody at Maryland, at Seattle, at Urbana, some people in Bombay. Uh, unfortunately, nothing was known. And then last December, uh, I was, I was, yeah, I had joined IISC by then. Uh, I was visiting UCLA, where I met uh, Professor Terence Tao. And for those of you who don't know uh, who he is, presumably very few. Here's a very short biography. So uh, he's the youngest participant in the IMO in history at the age of 10. That year he got a bronze, so he is the youngest bronze medalist. So presumably that is a consequence of the previous one, you can figure it out. The very next year he got a silver, that makes him the youngest silver medalist in IMO history. You can guess what the next slide is. <laughs> and then you know, the only other thing he did of importance after that, well, or award he got of importance, IMO and field medal. Right? That is where you all should go, IMO and field medal. Anyway, so he got, but yeah, he's extremely decorated. He's one of the sharpest minds around. The one of the most prolific mathematicians. He's achieved lots of powerful results and gotten most other awards. Anyway, so uh, anyway, so yeah, but he's incredibly sharp. Let's just put it at that. So word games with Terence Tao. So this is what, uh, so this is what we discussed. So suppose, so recall, these are the two properties which I wrote down here. Suppose we want to show this thing. So, okay. So first of all, I can rescale and say that make all of these whatever these lengths were right. The length of each of these is some number if it is negative fine, if it is positive divide by some large positive number. So, all of them become less than 1 that dividing by positive number does not change what we want that is the point 0 divided by anything stays here and positive means the inequality stays. Okay. Now, the strategy then that uh, that it came out of our discussion was to try to prove that this length is less than c for a smaller and smaller value of t, I erase this, but the moment is less than say or less than 1 over n for all n, then you get that is less than 0. Okay. So, now we come to the word games. So, this is the last time you will be asked to play games in this camp of thought that can be solved on the board. So, from this, from these alone, can you prove this is less equals, oh I, sorry, the third property that I mentioned, length of alpha, length of al beta all of those less equals 1. From these can you prove it is less equals 4? Yes, that is trivial that is just the triangle inequality. Okay. Yes. Can you prove it is less equals 2? Yes, why so? Yeah. Right. So, you break it here that is you do this. Now, the length of this by here is length of beta which is less equals 1 and beta bar which is less equals 1 and you get 2 perfect. I might have broken it differently, but exactly. So, how about 4 over 3? Let me tell you 4 over 3 because that is it you, you will get there. You will get there I know because I got there. I am sure you will, but this is what you do. 4 over 3 should remind you of something. This 3 in the denominator should tell you what to do cube. So, if you look at the length of alpha beta cube, so I am going to call this alpha beta for convenience. Look at the length of this cube. How many letters does this have? This has 4 letters. So, how many does the cube have? 12. So, I first I write this down, forget the length. Alpha beta alpha bar beta bar, but I write them 3 at a time, because I want 4. Alpha beta alpha bar beta bar and then alpha and then sorry beta alpha bar beta bar. There are 12 letters, I write them into groups of 3. What is the length of this? This is less than the length of this plus length of this plus this plus this. 
each of them is a conjugate, so I just get the length of beta, length of alpha, length of this, length of this. Each of them is one, at most one, so I get at most four. So thrice the length of this is at most the length of is less equal to four, but this is exactly three times the length that we want, and I get four over three. Word games. The question was, can we keep improving on these word games and come down to zero? And that is what he posted on the blog. So, this is where the blog starts. So, uh, here is a curious question posed to me that I do not know the answer to. So, and then he has let F2 be the free group on two generators, he describes this thing. What is not clear to me is if one can keep. So, that is where we ended, and then you know, I left to fly back to India and he posted the blog. If, if what is not clear is if one can keep arguing like this to continually improve on these bounds and come down all the way to 0, blah, 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 blah. blah. Anyway, this feels like a problem that might be somewhat receptive to a more crowdsourced attack. So, I am sure all of you know crowdsourcing. Uh, I definitely did not at my age, it was not probably around. Uh, so, I am posting it here in case any readers wish to try to make progress on. And then it started. So, Conjugation invariance, this that I erase, L of g h g inverse is L of h, that came within 3 hours from that first guy, this Tobias Fritz from Germany. So, he is this very young and incredibly sharp guy. And then people spent 2 days trying to find examples. So, out of the 5 days that I said it took to build the world, if you will, uh, the first 2 days were saw, uh, spent trying to find examples that did work. Maybe can you introduce additional rules without the rule alpha beta equals beta alpha, that is just always going to work, but without that can you introduce it additional rules and then make it work, nothing worked out. So, if for those of you who know, I will say they try to find solvable groups, nilpotent groups, uh, some kind of perfect groups, maybe any, nothing worked. So, then they said, okay, fine, then, then people said, okay, maybe it does not work, let us try to uh, prove it does not work, let us try to bring that bound down to 0. So, 4 over 3 was we had already put on the blog, can you beat 4 over 3? The next bound was 5 over 4 and I am going to tell you how. More, so the, the point of this talk is just to tell you the word game. So, here is the word game again. If you want, you can follow it, but this is the word game. Start with a different string. Now, you had alpha beta, alpha bar, beta bar, put an alpha before it. Okay. So, uh, anyway, you can I mean, you do not need to follow this. The real idea is on the next slide. So, this is just some example of how, how much more involved you have to do. So, if you write this down and twice this length, then you means you have 5 letters, you write 10 letters. So, you do something alpha. So, this is alpha square beta, alpha bar beta bar, alpha square beta, alpha bar beta bar, and then I multiply by alpha bar square alpha square. So, there were 10 letters already, these are the 10 letters. There are 4 more letters which are doing nothing alpha bar square alpha square, they cancel, but then I can do something clever. So, now by sub additive, I can break off this alpha square and get 2, and here I see alpha square beta and beta bar alpha bar square. If you carefully check, these are inverses of each other because they are in the reverse order also. So, the length of a so this is a conjugate, the length of this conjugate you can remove the g and g inverse, and I just get these two. But this is a conjugate, this is a conjugate itself. So, these are conjugates within conjugates, I call them nested conjugates, and so I get 1, 2, and 2, and so this is a conjugate, this is a conjugate, these are 2, I get 4. So, twice length of this is less than 4, so this length is less than 2. And now I can do the same trick as on that board. So I take, I want 5 over 4, so I take 4 times the commutator, I get 16 letters, and I do it cleverly so that what remains here is that extra 5 letter string. And then you do the math, but it then you can just check that this is again a nested, this is a conjugate of 4 of 3 conjugates. So one conjugate gives 1, another gives 1, another gives 1, after breaking this off, which gave 2, and you get 5. Okay, so you get 5 over 4. You can do various kinds. So, the, you have a, so, the point is the following. One thing is notice the repeated conjugations on the right hand side, conjugates inside conjugates. The second is that notice that at each step you get a finite improvement. I okay. will say that in the slide right now. So, so the blog post one, uh, so now I am telling you all these times in the Indian standard time for convenience. So, 17 December, and so he posted it on the 16th night in UCLA. Here it was morning. Uh, in 3 hours, as I said, literally at the dot of 3 hours, stroke of 3 hours, it came. Then you, there was 5 over 4, so 4 over 3 was fairly straightforward, 5 over 4 was not, but it was still doable. You can see why it works on 5 lines. 19 over 16 became harder, 
and 22 over 23. First of all, this is an important breakthrough because the bound went below 1. And that was somehow uh, maybe a psychological uh, barrier for people. Will it ever go below 1? If it does, then it will go to 0. It did go below 1. But you can imagine if it took the from here, the next bound was this is 20 over 16. The next improvement was to 19 over 16. How much harder it would have been to get to here? So, it was extremely clever tricks one after the other, but the point is one has to keep reducing to get to 0 and at each stage you are getting to a finite number. You have to do this any finite number of steps with getting to a positive number, it will not get you to 0. So, in principle this is an infinite process and there are therefore, infinitely many more and more clever tricks and that is going to be hard to do. So, what we wanted ideally was something that would recurse, that would sort of apply repeatedly to itself feed on itself and this is where sort of maybe let us say intuition broke down or I do not know what to say, uh, but there was a stopping block uh, here for almost 24 hours out of the 5 days 2 were gone uh, and then there was a third day which was almost entirely gone with nothing and then Siddharth Gargil who was my colleague he programmed uh, he had an idea which he asked, but he was verifying their idea manually was sort of very hard he got a computer to do it for him. So, again this is a very 21st century you know uh, project it starts on the blog it has a computer. The idea was the following if indeed this is to hold I if indeed this was to hold then if you take powers of this and multiply by alpha by that sub additive business it should be close to length of alpha or it should be less than 1 right. And he did this to a computer assisted search I will show you on the next slide how he wrote it up. And the crazy thing was, so this was as I said, so on 21st December, 20th December, uh, 22 or 23, and it took almost a, a 22 hours. And then this, so he wrote down this thing. He said, here is a computer generated proof where he got to 0.816, starting literally from saying the norm of the length of alpha bar is less than 1, therefore, the length of this conjugate is less than 1. So, you know, if you try to write down each step in a proof where you do not jump any steps it takes you 126 lines to get to the point where you get to 0 0.816. And of course, I cannot imagine doing it manually, maybe somebody can in this audience, I certainly cannot, but he got a computer to generate this and he found the computer found the path by which you can. So, this is what computers can actually do when programmed correctly. And so, it does the previous, so this line says that if you take the 17th power of a commutator, these are 68 ASCII characters and the bars on either side and let it. Then that is less than 13.8596 divided by 17 because of this uh, to the power k thing and you get to 0.81 whatever 0.81. So, he did this and somebody else Pace Nielsen said this was beautiful my intuition before something 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 and then he literally said the first 43 lines established something the next 30 lines of the code he went through it established something the next 40 lines established something the last 7 lines established. Something. So, he actually took it apart and decoded the computer generated proof and found out what it was doing and then that was the next idea that came and that was isolated into the following result. So, that is the last trick I am going to tell you and I am almost at the end yeah I have two slides after this. So, this is called the internal repetition trick for lack of a better name. So, suppose x y z so suppose I have four strings ok just in some four strings, but x is conjugate conjugate remember is g and g inverse x is conjugate to something like w times y and x is also conjugate to z times w inverse. Yes, so, the same w shows up in both of the strings. Then the length of x is at most the half the length of y and z. And the remarkable thing here is that it does not depend on w and the proof is uh, strange, but I found it very nice to show you. So, what you do is you write x you write 2 n powers of x earlier at some point for conjugation we wrote n powers of x now you write 2 n powers of x the first n of them you write as this one. So, suppose x is s w y s inverse then what is the nth power it is s w y to the n s inverse that is what conjugates do and the same way if it is conjugate to this one it is t times this times t inverse what is the nth power it is t z w inverse to the n times t inverse. So, the length of the 2 nth power is the length of this string and now do not look at the inequality look at the picture this string is written here s w y w y w y w y s bar s bar is a single t z w bar z w bar z w bar t bar just write these things down and now start taking one element at a time out by the sub additive. So, by sub additivity it is less than length of s plus the rest 
plus the length of t bar. So, I get a s and a t bar come out. Now, what remains? I do not uh, you can see. If I remove the s and the t bar, I get a conjugate because there is a w here and a w bar here, which is the first. I remove those because conjugates I can remove. Then what I get is a y and a z. I take those out. So, I get s t bar y z individual terms. So, s s t bar 1 y and 1. Then I again I get w and a w bar. I remove those. I again get a y and a z and keep going. So, ultimately I get n of the y's, all of the n y's I recover, all of the n z's from here I recover, none of the w and w bar they all cancel conjugates and in the between I have s bar and t. So, I get s, s bar, t, t bar, one from here, one from here and those and that is it divide by what now 2 n. You get length of x less equals n over 2 n is half, this does not depend on n. So, by that trick it goes and I will end then with a sample ok. I have still have 10 minutes or maybe 5 minutes I do not know. But anyway, so I will end with a so here is the sample application. So, here are some random elements. So, x actually is not not too random x is as as I said the computer was programmed to find alpha beta square times alpha. That means alpha beta alpha bar beta bar alpha beta alpha bar beta bar alpha ok and then choose y w and z in some clever fashion do not try to do not do this right now, but you can then check that x is con So, I found so we found somehow cleverly this element and these three and by that lemma the length of x is at most so the length, what is x x was this number this is a string of 9 letters which is just keep writing them and stop at the ninth point 1 2 3 this this is my x. The length of x is less than length of y plus length of z, but y is a conjugate of two nested conjugates that is just 2, z similarly is 2, so I get 2. Okay. So, what is, I just did something, I have not done anything yet. But what I am going to show is the previous bound that was there was 0.816. Using that lemma, I am going to beat that bound on this board by 8 over 11, which is 0.72 bar just using this fact now. Why? 8 over 11, so the trick obviously is to multiply 11 of these copies. So, you write down 44 elements, do not write it down, just look at it here and separate into 4 copies, so 11 of them. Right? So, now what is each of them? So, the, if you look at the first 11 letters, you get alpha, alpha bar here, you can check and what is in between is 9 successive letters of that kind, but 9 successive letters I know how to do, that is 2 whether I take alpha beta square alpha or beta alpha bar square beta or alpha bar beta bar square alpha bar, the game is the same. So, each of these four is a conjugate of 9 letter string which is exactly of the kind we want. So, I get 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, I get 8. And so, just from that one simple internal repetition trick that I called it, we beat the existing bound on one board. I have not used any of the previous cases. I just used conjugate invariance and the repetition trick. But again, the problem is still this works very good, it beats the best bound, but still it is a finite improvement. I need to get down to 0. Getting down to a finite number at each stage does not quite help me. So, how do I get down to 0? And finally, I will conclude. It turns out that to show this thing, that trick and the conjugate invariance are enough. It turns out that is a very Finally, this the last bit is a bit of combinatorics involving again binomial coefficients and uh, so on. If you want, you can compactly express it. So, you can explicitly write it down and take calculations or you can compactly express it as the previous talk did. Don't you can actually use bino binomial variables or Bernoulli variables to write it much more uh, sharply, small, uh, much more in small space. And the key idea is there is that the sum of n such Bernoulli variables has average spread not of the order of magnitude of n, but of order of magnitude square root n. The variance is of order n, the standard deviation is of order square root n, which is what Anthur also pointed out. And that is supposed to bound. So, you basically would get that n times length alpha beta, that whole combinator n times or 4 n many letters in a string is at most something like square root n times a constant. One can check. That is where you need this bound of the variance of binomial. Now, divide by n take n to infinity, you get the length of this thing is less than 1 over n square root of n here and that is what you need a order of magnitude smaller than n, you get it, you get to 0 
and that is the proof that is roughly the proof. This was finally observed by Tau at uh, 3 people uh, in, in his afternoon shall we say. So, he did the last killing blow and then that was the proof in roughly 5 days. Okay, so, to conclude then what started out as a search for more and more clever tricks and games to reduce this bound on C ended up as a you know let us say 21st century collaboration at breakneck speed you can see the. So, I came back from the US and I was severely jet lagged for the next few days and I had a Google alert for Gmail alert for every time there is a blog and God, I basically could not sleep those 5 days because that kept happening very frequently there lots of people contributing and a computer that crucially contributed. Lost the word. So, I will end with two points. One is well, there are more details if you want the full proof with what is a norm and a group and what are the motivations and so on that will be what I talk about at IIT Bombay uh, the colloquium this afternoon. But the second is actually uh, what again I will end with something that Professor Raghunathan was saying as well is so this is what I do this is exactly what I do for a living now. And I, I came to the Olympiad camp 20, 20 something years ago not 25 less than that and I knew I wanted to do math all my life and even now you can ask as basic questions as you can write down without any mathematical background and the sharpest minds in the world are still interested in these questions and they actually turn out to be. So, this actually has some consequences in geometry as well in what we call geometry group theory and quasi, quasi norms and so on I would not obviously get there here. Uh, but people are interested I mean people still love to solve questions with just can we find cleverer tricks that work and that turns out to be of interest to people and and I mean and you know I went there to UCLA you know because I could use a grant to go there um, and, and, and it turned out to be a very fruitful collaboration and uh, I was going there for a previous collaboration with Tau but anyway but this came up and uh, uh, this I still basically yeah you still get to you know talk to some of the sharpest minds work on some of the simplest to state problems try to apply some of the cleverest tricks come across some of the most beautiful mathematics. And uh, I really hope again as he did that some of you or maybe many of you will at least pursue and keep up this interest in mathematics hopefully some of you will actually pursue mathematics um, uh, as a career uh, or maybe computer science theoretical computer science is all that. Uh, certainly very very interesting math. Uh, when I was in your side the person who gave a talk at the end one of them was Subhash Ajit Kot who has now recently won the Nevan Lina prize I believe. He was 2 years my senior he was IIT number 1 and he went into theoretical computer science and is a professor not in industry. But again there are of course lots of math jobs for people in industry also uh, Wall Street for sure or yeah and um, data analytics jobs in the Bay Area on the other side of the east west coast of the USA. And there are there are lots of good opportunities now more than ever for people doing mathematics and I sincerely hope that some of you or many of you will at least keep the interest up. You like solving problems guess what problems will like you thank you. Thank you Apurva for a very exciting talk any question. How old? How old are how this old question is uh, so as I said I came across this question from some probability research about 2 years ago. 2 years. But until December it was not solved and then in 5 days it was solved. So, this so this was your question. Yeah okay. I mean so that is why he said on the blog also here is a question asked to me by me asked to him by me. And this uh, lemma is due to whom uh, that lemma is stated. The, the internal repetition trick. Right that right. That came up so after Siddharth put up his proof on the computer and Pace Nielsen decoded it. Okay. Then I think uh, that is what Tao's bread and butter is. He takes complicated <laughs> things and he makes them as simple as possible, he cleans okay. it up. I think eventually he wrote the lemma down. Who? who? Terry uh, Tao. Okay. Yeah. That is his speciality. Thank you. He takes yeah, things that look complicated and, and in fact, apparently, I think that is what the Fields Medal citation for him sort of said that somehow once he has written the proof, you think, oh, why did not I think of this before? Kind of. So, that is his job. So, I think the lemma finally he exactly this form was his, but it was isolated by uh, yeah, Pace Nielsen in some sense after Siddharth Gargil had the idea. And so on. Any other question? Okay, if there is no more question, let us thank the speaker again. Uh, I would request Professor Pranesh Achar to present a bouquet to Apurva. Take a photograph. Thank you.
Just one interesting thing came up uh, during the camp. Uh, we have some app message uh, sent by Udayan Prajapati to Professor Grover. Uh, there was one the Professor A. R. Rao, who was our colleague. Uh, he was born in 1909. Let me write the dates. He passed away in 2011, maybe 12, 1908, sorry. You can erase that quickly. He was 102 plus. Okay. And um, there was a neighbor of Professor A. R. Rao who was uh, inspired by A. R. Rao, and uh, he was the director of the film 102 Not Out. Have you heard of the movie? 102 Not Out? Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it had several major actors in it. It was an interesting thing we had uh, learned from Professor Grover. Thank you. Oh, OK, sorry. I said he was our colleague at the camp. Yeah, he, he came to the camp when he was 84 and was here until 89. He stopped coming because there was no, uh, the lift was not working here at that time. Now the lift is working. Thank you. OK, so that's all that we had for the function and the two talks. Uh, lunch outside for all of us. Please join us for lunch. <laughs>